nine days all our thoughts have been with Michael Watson still critically ill after his fight with Chris Eubank our cameras were there that night and we're here once again to see Lennox Lewis defending his British and European heavyweight titles against Glenn McCrory the former world cruiserweight champion from the Northeast I know many of you feel this fight shouldn't be taking place and that we shouldn't be televising it and I can sympathize with that it's been a very hard decision for ITV sport but the fight is going on and for us to curtail or abandon our coverage well that wouldn't solve anything i've been joined here by gary mason and jim watt gentlemen your thoughts on what's happened to boxing in the last week you first of all gary well i think a lot of people that are generally not interested in fighters or actually what goes on in fighting have found an excuse to um make their voices heard and that's what they've done they've just jumped on it to um make a load of noise as they always do well there have been tragedies in boxing over the years thankfully not too many tragedies but last week's tragedy was on live television everybody in the country saw that there have been other tragedies just as bad the fighters have actually died because of them boxing has survived through it was a terrible accident but i think we have to look upon it as an accident it's not the normal in the, the fight game these things it can happen, it did happen, but it's not the normal. I think the safety standards in boxing are as high as they can possibly be and still be calling it professional boxing. I don't really think there's much we can do to change boxing. Let's look ahead to the fight coming up. Gary, what are your thoughts? Well, I've been trying to work it out with myself. I've been trying to give Glenn a winning chance. But I thought, well, Lennox is a bigger man, naturally stronger man. Um, and he's got the ambition, which I think is going to be important in this fight, whereas Glenn has been to the top and he's trying to climb up again. And at that stage, when things start getting a bit, like, really hard, he might not find it there to dig deep, whereas Lewis is unbeaten on the way up, so he'll have all the courage and inspiration he needs. Quick comment from you, Jim. Yeah, well, Glenn didn't cut it as a heavyweight before. He's more mature now, more experienced. He can probably put up a show, but it depends. Does he really believe in himself? Thanks, gents. We'll be back with the fight very shortly. And welcome back to the Royal Albert Hall. Let's take a closer look at the two fighters. Lennox Lewis, the unbeaten champion, and the challenger, Glenn McCrory. He's a really popular fella from Anfield Plain in County Durham. McCrory's been a world champion at cruiserweight. He beat the African Patrick Lumumba on a wild night in his native northeast two and a half years ago. Making that weight, though, was an awful task. McCrory is much comfier as heavy. He's always been a good trainer. He's adopted an army-style regime for this one, living the life of an infantryman with the Green Howards at Catrick for the last month. My feeling is he'll retire if things don't go his way tonight. I've never been fitter. Um, this is probably the biggest challenge of my life. Um, it, it's, it's a very big fight. But um, I'm as ready as I could ever be. I could never be any fitter. I could never be any stronger. So I am... Um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to getting in there and doing my best. Leonard Lewis boxed for Canada in the Seoul Olympics, winning a gold at super heavyweight. In his last fight, he dispatched a former world champion, Mike Weaver, making it 16 fights, 16 wins. Lewis says he's a man on a mission. He represented Canada because his mum emigrated when he was just 12 years of age. Gradually, the British public have taken to this quiet, dignified fighter. This is a, a next step up. Glenn McCoy is a stepping stone for me, and I'm going to go in there and prove it. He feels that he can come from a cruiserweight to a heavyweight, and everything's going to be on nice and, you know, cheery. But I'm going to, I'm going to help educate in, in heavyweight class. At the way in this lunchtime, Lewis, age 26, looked very relaxed before his first defence. Lance Lewis, 16 stone, seven pounds. 
Rory, 27 last week, is a big outsider. He went to the scales wearing his jeans, but he's still giving away a lot of weight. Official weight for Glen McCrory is 15 stone 11 pounds. Both fighters are in the ring, all set to go. Your commentators will be Jim Watt and Reg Guttridge. First of all, the ring announcer, Mick Goodall. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event of the evening. Frank Maloney for Championship Enterprises is proud to present the contest of 12 three-minute rounds, sponsored by the Navy Sports and the Sunday Sports, to decide the heavyweight championship of Great Britain and Europe. Introducing in the blue corner, we're in the red trunks from Stanley So the referee then is uh, John Coyle. Now this is under European rules. That's the 10-point bus system. That's uh, 10 and then 9 and the appropriate number to the loser of the round. That's normally beyond 8. I'm surprised Ben McCrory's 15-11. I thought he'd come in perhaps over 16 stone, but uh, now that's Lewis, 16-7. He only weighed 16-3 when he defeated Gary Mason in the seventh round at Wembley last March. Well, Glenn's just an articulate sort of a fellow and he's cooked a good fight and let's see if he can do something with it. I think Lewis wanted to establish himself the authority right away and he's certainly doing that. Now he didn't do this against Mike Weaver last time. Up. Oh, there's bangs around the ribs. He was beaten in the Cruiserweight Championship, remember Glenn McCrory with a body punch, but that was very weight weakened. Uh, only 13 zone 8 those days. Well, we haven't seen, we've seen on ITV nearly all of Lennox Lewis's fights. This is the liveliest start he's had him, really. Although he has had some one round wins. Well, I think, Tony, as you can see, there is he's in with a cruiser weight. There's no reason he can't march straight in here to get down to business. Uh, I don't think he feels McCrory has enough power to trouble him. Yeah, I think he wants to intimidate McCrory as uh, soon as he possibly can and he might just have managed that. Well, he only had a 58 second win at the Albert Hall last year and had four in one round, but I think this is... McCrory showed a bit of guts there, he took some good shots on the chin and uh, got himself back. Third hold to McCrory and going for Lewis. Lewis just seems so much bigger and stronger already, Reggie, doesn't he? Beating a man of Mike Weaver's calibre, admittedly very much a veteran, but he did it with a, a perfect tactical punch, a right-hander in Lake Tahoe. Not getting out the round up for the Corys. Plenty of guts, though. Normally he can he box it a bit and can slip punches, but he can't this one. He's catching him with a behind a punch. So Lewis a minute to go. Lewis has nothing to worry about what's coming back, his weird edge, and he's just moving right in and uh, doing as he likes so far. He has run some blood already uh, for one of those uppercuts. The 
strands from Victoriati in there, Lewis, doesn't he? Up and cuts over on punches. Four marks from McCrory, he's hanging in there, but for how long? Yeah, he'll have to be more mobile, he can't, he can't uh, cover up and stand his ground, he's going to have to move. He thinks that was the bell, the referee. I thought I heard the bell there, though, Jim. I know it's, it isn't, it's, that, it's 21 seconds to go. It looked as though he was going to dive in, although I think he was going to pull him off the corner there, Jim. So just as the referee moved over, um, McCrory threw a couple of little punches, maybe changed his mind. But uh, this can't continue much longer, Lloyd. McCrory is not mobile enough, he'll have to use his legs, but already he's feeling the pace. It's the roughest I've seen, Lewis, I'll tell you that. And the cheering, actually, McCrory surviving, I think, more than uh, Lewis's murderers round there. Well, gentleman uh, Glenn on the gown there, on the uh, tunics there at the seconds, and he, he certainly is. Uh, there was plenty of guts going in there, wasn't there? It's, uh, only had one recent fight as a heavyweight, and I wondered whether he really had sufficient credentials. But when it comes to the heart, he's got plenty of it. And in replay, Jim. Yeah, well, uh, Lewis just doing uh, completely as he pleases. That was the uppercut that uh, started the blood from the nose. It's always difficult for a cruiserweight to come up and challenge a heavyweight, especially an up-and-coming heavyweight uh, coming towards his peak. See the edge? Lewis is just moving and doing as he pleases. Not the slightest worry he was coming back from McCrory. Just uh, totally dominating the action. This can't continue much longer. Well, you never know the way any heavyweight contest can turn around, but it certainly looks most unlikely. He's looking over to the corner and nodding there, Lewis, getting orders from the seconds. The Americans have said, well, we think this kid might be the, the best on the block of the young fellas coming up. And he's out to prove it because he's already been half promised the job. Uh, that's what pro boxers call getting a contest. A, a contest on the Tyson Holyfield that show on November the 8th. Oh, the right hand up for Pat it. And John Cors showing the finger count as well to make sure that he understands it perfectly. Get a mandatory eight. See, McCrory's managing to, to prevent the clean punch he's landing, but as soon as Lewis lands cleanly, I think he's going to be out of there because he just has too much strength, too much power for him. McCrory's been saying that Lewis hasn't really fought anybody that has his ability, but... Uh, Lewis has taken the play away and the fight away from him and a long right hand. Now that was a replica of the one that he caught Mike Weaver with and I don't think he's going to make this count now. Nine and he's out. He's out in the act of rising, they call that. And the referee was quite right to count McCrory out in the second round. Well, he gave it all he got there just in that last half minute, Jim. There was a great fight back by McCrory, but he was... Uh, well, hopelessly outpunched. Well, you have to say, a very impressive action from Lewis. I mean, he, McCrory called himself a heavyweight. He came in to challenge for a heavyweight title. Lewis went about the job as a heavyweight should. He parceled him up, never allowed McCrory into the fight at any time. Completely dominated him, then got him out of there. Thankfully, McCrory didn't suffer too much uh, as far as punishment is concerned. So that's... Uh hard as well for what they call the cut man there, Jimmy Tibbs is in the corner who of course was with Michael Watson last week so look at those powerful shoulders uh, well he's, carry he's carrying the sort of hopes of the nation on those shoulders isn't he and they're a heavyweight champion since Bob Fitzsimmons and he never fought in this country Cornishman so taking the plaudits on its and rightly so and as we look at the replays now this is the first knockdown Jim yeah, see, you have to be troubled by an opponent's punches. If you're not, then you just go in and do it exactly as you please. And a good little shot. Uh, the first clean shot, really, that landed was the one that troubled McCrory. Brave enough to come up off the floor, try to get back into the match, but he didn't have the artillery. That one just whisked by, just caught the edge of his chin. Yeah, that, that was, was as I said, Jim, as I said, that was almost uh, like the weaver, the weaver punch. I mean, he's got that right hand, like pole-axing uh, punch. You see, bingo, it just caught him on the side of the chin there. And over he went. 
Well, we've had some uh, chances of the Britain's fighting for the championship of the world a long way. Gunnar Moore, Jack Palmer, Tommy Farr, Don Cockle, Brian London twice, Henry Cooper, Joe Bugner, Richard Dunn, and Frank Bruno twice. Now, can this fellow make it? He was born in West Ham, reared in Canada. So he's worked up a sweat, but uh, really that was about all, and gets the, the European belt, John Morris, the Secretary of the Boxing Board of Control, uh, who's represented as steward for the European Boxing Union on this contest, and uh, he gets the, the Lonsdale belt replaced, and it will, certainly as far as Europe's concerned, it's going to take uh, some special heavyweight to try and uh, knock him off the pedestal. And there's McCrory now, sad for him as well. And I think his wife, uh, Mandy, is asking him uh, to get out of the game. He's got so many other things to do, acting, running a bar, modelling, a whole bit. Bit of TV commentating, and he's very good at that too. So, uh, with so many belts around, he looks almost like a bandit. So let's get another opinion then, uh, from the man who, who knows, one of these days might shift him, Frank Bruno. Frank, what did you think of Lennox Lewis? He's pretty impressive. Right? Yeah, pretty impressive. The referee could have stopped holding him a little bit, but he's pretty impressive. Now, he started better than I've ever seen him before. Yeah, usually he starts very, very slow, Gary, you know what I mean? But this time, I'm not taking nothing away from um, Dan McCrory, you know? He was a cruiserweight, he had one fight as a heavyweight, so I think he should have had a couple of more fights. I'm just glad he wasn't hurt after the Michael Watson case and everything was okay. Yes, I mean, people watching at home would think, well, that wasn't much of a match, really. It wasn't much of a match, but, you know, I'm just glad that everything's OK and he's healthy and he's, he's on his feet and everything's OK. Just dealing with Dan McCrory, presumably he should retire now, shouldn't he? Yeah, that, that's a natural thing for people to say, you know what I mean, that he should retire, you know what I mean? It's rude for, for people to say that he retired because he's a fighter, he's got a mortgage to pay and he's got a lot of bills to pay, he's got a wife, he's got kids, so... But we are talking about health and he's got no way yeah, to go Yeah, you now. are talking about health, Gary, you know what I mean? But boxing, we all know that um, boxing is, can give, you know, not give you bad health, it, it can be bad, driving can be bad, everything can be bad for you, Gary. Right, let's talk about Lennox Lewis. Now... Is this boxer world-class, real world-class? I'm not too sure, you know what I mean? He's got to have someone standing up there in front of him what can hit back and stand up, but they're guiding him at the right pace at the moment, so we just got to wait and see. Only time will tell. Will Frank Bruno be the man up there who tests him? I'll tell you, Gary, I've been at the ring for two and a half years. I've got to get my first fight off the right. ground, and then you asked me that question about a couple of months' time, and then I'll answer it a bit more better, Gary. Well, let me just ask this. Let me sort of look forward. Supposing you come through the tests, we hope you do, and I'm yeah. sure you will over, right. over the first few fights. Do you see yourself fighting Lennox Lewis? Because he's he's claiming to be the best heavyweight around here. He's the European and British champion. Somewhere along the line, it'd be a roadblock, Gary, you know? How would you fight Lennox Lewis, then? I can't really tell you on television, you know? I keep my secrets close to myself, you know? You are at the moment. I'm trying to yeah. get him out of here. Right, you. yeah. I thought the boxing news banned you from being around there. The British Boxing Board of Control, yeah. just for tonight, actually. It's right. fairly sensitive. So yeah. I'll be talking to the boxers in the dressing room a bit later. But yeah. I'm getting the opinions out of you at the moment right. because we're delighted uh, to see you around, bubbling again, and obviously itching to get back into the ring. Very, very itching, you know, Gary. Right, now, I've been disappointed in Lennox Lewis in the past, but I have to say but that... But you've been disappointed in so many boxes in the past, you know what I mean? Every time you get up there, you make a name for yourself being disappointed. Well, you was in disappointed I'm in a, in a situation Banks, now where... You're disappointed in that one, you know, but still, you're making a name for yourself there, Well, I'm Gary, not trying to do that. I'm trying yeah. to look at things analytically. Now, mm. Lewis, mm. if the British public can keep faith with him, presumably yeah. has now got a really good chance of going forward yeah. to the World Championship. You know I mean? He's done everything was asked of him, you know? So you can't do no more than that. You've done everything what your editor tells you or your governor tells you to do, you know? But sometimes you get a little bit naughty. <laughs> do you think so? <laughs> yeah, I'm being kind naughty. to you tonight, though. Yeah, you're very kind, you know? Very, I've got to buy you a drink. <laughs> <laughs> not, not at the moment, because you're in training. But um, with Lewis now, he's going to America. The, the one worry over here is, are we going to lose Lennox Lewis to the American scene? Because there's some I'm talk about him sure, signing Gary, a four-fight four deal, like, um, yeah, four deal with the Doovers. Yeah, four-fight deal with the Doovers, but the man's got to, you know what I mean, make his bread or make his corn wherever it takes him if it takes him america it takes him america you know that question you've got to ask him you can't ask me that question you got to ask frank maloney or lennox lewis himself 
You've had two shots at the world title. I mean, is this the country to breed heavyweights, or do you, in the end, have to go I to America? I think in this country, they're getting very, very hungry, the heavyweights, you know, because, like, with the recession, and uh, there's young guys, they're breeding them very, very fast up and down the country, Birmingham, Wolverhampton, London, Tottenham, all over the place. So in a couple of years' time, you never know, Gary. Good. I've enjoyed sparring with you tonight. Thank you very much. To Cheers. The, the ball that went bad in picking you not to go up there, but you've been very cool today, Gary. You take yep. it easy. Well, thank you for calling me Gary and not Harry. It's yeah, nice no change. problem. You look like Harry with them glasses, but you're a bit more bigger than Harry. Yeah, I certainly am. Cheers. Thank you very much. Good. Nice one, Gary. Good to join you. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah, decent little scrap, that one, between uh, Gary Newborn and Frank Bruno. Went on a bit longer than uh, Glenn McCrory and Lennox Lewis, but uh, on a serious side, to like to see Glenn McCrory up. Uh, taking notice and congratulating and it's Lewis on a fine performance. We have more boxing action to come. We're going to get the views of Gary Mason and as Gary Newborn said, he's going to be talking to Lennox Lewis. That's all to come. Rejoin us for that. Welcome back to the Royal Albert Hall. Lennox Lewis has retained his British and European heavyweight title, stopping Glenn McCrory very decisively in the second round. Gary Mason, I think you always felt that the fight was going to go that way. Yes, well, it was a predictable win. Um, Lewis did what he knew he could do. He went out there knowing that McCrory was a uh, cruiserweight and didn't have the power to trouble him. And you saw, by the way, the fast start. He went out, took it straight to him. He was bomb bombing away. And the one thing is, when you're a heavyweight, if your opponent can't punch, you have no respect for him. And Lennox Lewis showed that there when he went out. Just before we have a look at the action, you fought Lennox Lewis. In fact, he finished your career, didn't he, earlier this year. Have you seen a vast improvement in Lennox Lewis tonight? Well, I felt the improvement in Lennox Lewis at my, on March the 6th. Right. Um, I generally didn't believe in Lennox Lewis until then. Um, and even again tonight, although he won this fight, but it's very scrappy. Lennox is a sort of opponent that I, a sort of fighter, I think that rises to the occasion. Um, it, it, we didn't finish um, Glenn conclusively, but because it was a bit scrappy, but he, he seems to be that sort of fighter. When he fought me, he fought a completely different style of fight, which was the right style for that fight. Now, Gary, I said earlier on, I thought the British public was slowly taking to Lennox Lewis. I know you raised an eyebrow at that, and the reaction of some of the fans here was a little bit cool towards him, wasn't it? Well, what it was, Lennox has been as considered as a, a foreigner that has come in, and like he's beaten me just at a time when I think people are beginning to accept me. And then he's gone on and he's, he's fighting Glenn, and everybody loves Glenn. And then the next one, and then all of a sudden Frank's coming back, so they think, well, Frank's our man, let's jump on behind Frank because let's get Frank to bash up the Canadian sort of thing. That's how people are seeing him. But I think, I, I generally, after watching um, Lennox again tonight, and even from a biased point of view, which I will have obviously, um, I think Lennox could well go on to be. A, a, a real good contender because people say they're still considering him a novice but when you think that he's beaten someone who's had 35 fights and didn't lose any of them and, and could punch and like he went through that and he did beat me regardless of what I think or anybody else thinks he did actually beat me on paper so I think he's, he's ready for most things. We'll hear more from you in a moment uh, Gary but let's go down into the dressing rooms because Gary Newborn is now talking to Lennox Lewis talking to you nice and early Lennox because the fight finished nice and early from your point of view why did you start so quickly tonight well because I you know had a lot of confidence going into the fight and I wanted to be taken really seriously I didn't think that Glenn McCrory took me that seriously so I wanted to prove to him this is what the heavyweight class is all about it was the best performance uh, we've seen from you but did you get extra confidence in starting like that because you were fighting what it was in effect a, a cruiserweight in the past not really because I, I realized because he was a you know cruiserweight coming up to heavyweight he would have that added speed and because my team behind me got me in really good shape and I felt really confident going out out there well we can show you that the moments that mattered here in the fight now and this is the first knockdown so what are your comments here uh, I was basically, I had him up against the ropes and I knew he would be ducking. So was, he was really ducking into my uppercuts and John Davenport always said to me, you know, look, look at what you see and just react off of it. Well, this is the finish and your concentration's really there. Yeah, I was basically, he said to just keep that jab up there and then throw a left, right. And it was a glancing right hand that hit him right on the chin that ended it all. Lennox, have you looked at your career and thought, why am I getting all this criticism from people like me and from newspapers you've read and at times the British public? And, uh, have you sort of thought, now I've really got to move up again? You know, I've been reading a lot of, a lot of criticism in the paper, you know. I realise there's a lot of jealous people out there, but 
I think it's good that I get that criticism because that makes me work really hard. I got criticism going into the Olympics Games and I won that. I got criticism going into my first professional fight and I won that. And I think, you know, keep all the critics coming. I like the comments. It just makes me work that harder. Well, you certainly did the business tonight. Now you're looking forward to America. I mean, there is talk about you going to box in America. There's talk of a four-fight deal with the Duvers, etc., etc. Are we going to lose you now that we're seeing the best of you? No, I'm still going to be boxing under the same flag as the British flag, and I'm going to go over there, and, you know, with with all the country behind me, and to do good over there. How? But you you are going to box still here in England. Oh, definitely. How far away do you think you are from a world title shot? Um. I would say within a year. Right. Now, looking at Glenn McCory, I know it's not your business, but what would your advice be to him now? Would you pack it up now if you were him? If I was Glenn McCory, you know, I wouldn't say pack it up. You know, there's still a lot of heavyweights out there he could beat. You know, it depends on how he feels. Can I just ask you one final question? I mean, obviously, it's a very sensitive week for British boxing, and everybody, including yourself, will be sad about what's happening to Michael Watson. But from a professional's point of view, how have you viewed this week and your own career and, and your thoughts about it? You know, it was really sad to see that happen to, especially a nice guy like Mike. And um, you know, I made sure I took a took time out to say a little prayer. It you know, it opens your eyes a bit about the profession that we're all in. But this is that we that this is the profession that we've took, and we realize the uh, dangers involved. Your your opinions are always worthwhile because they're considered. Now, what what are your considered opinions about your thoughts about the profession you're in? Uh, basically, I just want to. Go out there and achieve my goal and then get out of the sport. Does it worry you, the danger of it? No, I think it's just an added thing. There's, there's danger to every sport and, mm. you know, it depends God's will, you know, what happens. Great. Lennox, congratulations tonight. Good performance. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you. And that's Lewis, an excellent performance uh, inside the ring and talking well on behalf of his profession outside it. Gary, when you look at, at an interview like that, I mean, he comes across as, you know, as a considerate, as a nice guy, as a clean-cut sort of fella. Um, do you think what's happened here tonight might just tip the scales a little bit his way and a, a few people will go into work tomorrow and say, I'll tell you what, it's not about that, that, then it's Lewis. Yeah, no, yeah, people will do that, but what we must remember that boxes need show business with blood. That's yeah. all it is. Just talking about him and looking at his performance tonight, I know early on we criticised Lennox and we wondered about the power of his jab in particular and he's really worked hard at that and he's now got what every potential world heavyweight champion really needs and that is a real dig with his jab. Yeah, Lennox's jab is very good. He's got very long arms and a very good reach. Um, I underestimated Lennox's power. I didn't think he had the power, but he, he has um, an accumulative effect with the reach and the style, so that makes up for the power. Mm. And he's a lot stronger than I, people imagine he is. We haven't had a, a world heavyweight champion this century. Do you share his feelings that he's gonna be fighting for that world title within a year? Yes, with, after Mike Tyson has fought Evander Holyfield, um, whenever there is a winner sorted out, they will be looking for a European because a European is going to bring the money in and bring all the excitement. And a, a European who's actually won the Olympic gold medal is the biggest draw there is. If he fights, if one of them fight another American, all the American comes with his gum shield. Mm. But a European brings added interest and more money. Remember, this is business. You've got to figure where the money's coming from. So Lennox Lewis, ex-Olympic champion, ranked number six. Boom, give him a fight. Right. Gary, thanks very much indeed. We're going to end the chat there and get some more action.